from Wisconsin. You know, psychologically, we're in the middle of a dumpster fire. And Michigan. Just staying in touch with people back home, mostly. To Cheney, Washington. Being alone is kind of hard. Students from the Portland metro area are coping with a pandemic while far from home. Like many of them, Harley Hicks is dealing with unexpected isolation. A month before school started at Davenport University in Grand Rapids, she says only two of her classes were slated to be online. Now all but one are remote. The day before my classes started, they changed up my whole schedule and it was just kind of chaotic. Distance learning in a new city without a lot of support. It's definitely hard because you kind of rely on those relationships and those friendships as you're far away from home. And you can't really do that if you're in isolation. It's just a really hard adjustment. Ashley Sale started classes at Eastern Washington University this week. She spent the last month in town, mostly alone in her apartment. All of her classes are online this term. It's been kind of hard to meet people and kind of get to know the university. For Ashley, a big part of thriving in isolation is managing her mental health. And it's okay to feel depressed and anxious and lonely, you know, and just um, being able to cope with it in healthy ways is probably the best thing that you could do. And the best coping mechanism is just staying in contact with my people from home. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My plan is to pray that we don't go online. Sisters Gabby and Olivia Baker just transferred to Wisconsin Lutheran College after a difficult spring term learning online. So far, all of their classes are in person. It's very strict protocol. Like, if we are, everybody said, if you want to stay in person, you have to follow the rules. As of this morning, we had three cases total, total. since school started. Olivia did spend two days in quarantine while her roommate waited for COVID test results. She says it was tough. What I kept running through my mind is, for now, this is to keep other people safe and to keep myself safe so that this can stop and we can get out of this entire situation so much faster. That resolve is similar to what marriage and family therapist Katie Morton calls bridge statements, an important tool for anyone struggling right now. So bridge statements are like let's say we're in negativity island and we need to get to positivity island we have to build a bridge to get there and so little by little we need to live in the it's possible that the world isn't ending maybe i will get through this it i'm open to the idea that things could get better we have to start with that kind of language what about parents sending harley off to michigan was tough on her mom julie i can't just fly there and, and take care of it all. So um, I think that's the biggest part for me. And then, of course, what happens if things go really south? Dr. Jeffrey Eisen of Cascadia Behavioral Healthcare believes the first thing parents should do to help is just listen. And then trying to make an effort of not trying to actually solve the problem for someone, but actually just reflecting back on what one is feeling and perhaps offering to help brainstorm solutions um, rather than take it upon oneself to try to solve it for someone else. Dr. Eisen says make sure to follow up with your child after they share their concerns. It's important, especially during this time of unknowns. It's just very hard on your body never knowing what tomorrow's going to bring. Catherine Cook, KGW News.